So last year I did a really in-depth look at how to fish with bloodworm and joker on a pole and how it's a really easy bait to use. It was really popular and I know that not everybody gets a chance to fish with that sort of bait. So I thought this time we go out feeder fishing because it's not quite the same way, the same mindset of thinking you have to use bloodworm and joker in a different way when you're fishing with a feeder. So we're gonna show you all the different ways that you can prepare the bait, introduce it into the swim, and also how you can have a great day's fishing. So when we spoke uh, about bloodworm and joker and how to feed it when we did the float fishing video, we talked about the fact that you could regulate your bait by effectively measuring in an amount of bait, feeding a quantity at the start, and using that as a guide when to top up and when to work your peg, if you like. And that was really useful and very, very simple. Actually, when you feed a fishing, it's a bit different because when you're feeder fishing, of course, you've got a feeder on every single cast. And yeah, you might cast it in empty now and again, but a lot of the time you are going to be casting in regularly and trying to control your bait. So it's a little bit dangerous to sort of say, I'm just gonna have this mix and I'm gonna work out of that mix. So what I tend to do is I tend to look to feed a line somewhere in my peg where I will work with a set mix and I'm going to show you that to start with so you get the idea of what I'm talking about. So obviously you get your bloodworm and joker in a nice wrap of paper like this. My joker here is amazing. I've had this in the fridge all over Christmas for about three weeks and it's still in great condition so I'm really happy with that. It's so easy to keep just in the fridge like that. Fish don't care. It's not going to go off. This Ukrainian style joker is very very hardy and lasts a long time. So what I want to do is on one of my lines, I want to introduce a volume of bait at the start. I don't want to, I almost want to like put some bait in and leave it, let it settle almost like you would do on a pole. And that's where your pole cup is like your best mate because you can effectively measure your bait. So this is 100 mil, this pole cup. So I can get my ground bait. I can just smooth it off like that. And I know I've got 100 mil and I'm going to feed 400 mil on one of my lines at the start because it's a line where I just want to leave it for probably half the day, allow a few fish to gather there and it just means it gives me some sort of control and understanding of how I'm using my bait and in that I'm just going to put around about 50 mil of joker so I'm going to just blob this neat joker here look all tacky and horrible out of the paper pop it in until I'm about 50 mil and I think yeah, I'm happy with that. That looks about right to me. And that's going to go in there halfway. And then just mix it and work it through the ground bait, all right? What you don't really want is you don't really want it all blobbed together in the ground bait. You want it worked through the ground bait. You want to make sure that the joker is in there and sort of well distributed. Because the idea is when it's distributed through the mix, the fish almost have to like root through the ground bait and root through the silt to get it. It's not, a, it's not an easy meal. So it means that doing it like this, it's going to hold fish in my peg for that little bit longer. So look, if you take a look at that, look, really nicely distributed joker all the way through the ground bait. Now my ground bait for today is just purely a ground bait of F1 dark and sweet skimmer and that's in equal quantities. It's really cold. I've just eased off on the fish meal a little bit. And the reason I've done that is because it's really cold today. Now, you're probably thinking, well, Lee, when you fish with a pole, when you fish um, and you showed us before you used lean, and yeah, I did use lean because when you're fishing with a pole, you tend to feed your baits in larger quantities, big balls of ground bait. And it, it seems like that's a lot of ground bait to feed for fish at the start fish aren't really overly keen on like loads of ground bait in the middle of winter and we use the lean to almost carry the bait into the peg without adding any extra ground bait whereas with a feeder we don't feed that much ground bait I mean I've knocked up 
probably like two thirds of a kilo today. You can see there, even after I've taken my ground bait out, there's hardly any ground bait left there at all. So, you know, you don't need loads of ground bait for a feeder session because you're not going to be feeding it the same. So I'm very reluctant usually to dilute that ground bait with like a lean. So that's why I've gone for this sort of like all ground bait mix. Now, it's not always just about Bloodworm and Joker. I always like to take a little flick of color of other baits. I want something just to give the fish a visual attraction. So I've got a few white and fluoro pinkies here, hardly any like, I'm talking like 20, 30 pinkies, just so there's an odd little fleck in amongst the ground bait. So if the water is a bit clear and the fish aren't sure, they've got a visual attraction as well. So this is the area of my peg that I'll be leaving and I'll just be letting it settle. I might not even cast there till the last couple of hours. So that's one way of introducing the bait into your peg. Now the next way of introducing the bait into your peg is a more traditional feeder style setup. So what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna take another say 400 mil of ground bait with my cup, put that into my other container and there's not going to be any joker mixed in with this at all, all right? I'm not gonna mix any joker in this because with this approach, what I shall do is almost add the joker as I go. Now, what you've got to remember is if you keep putting joker in all the time, you can easily end up with lots of bait in your peg and it's all chaotic. And obviously it's the most attractive thing for fish, but it's getting that balance all the time is very important. So. I'm gonna show you how to introduce that bait with a feeder later, but in basically the essence will be picking out small amounts of joker, like this on my finger here, almost flicking it into the tub and either working it into the ground bait or almost just squeezing it in neat to the feeder to introduce that joker to the peg. And what that does is it gives me complete control of what goes into the peg. It gives me, it makes me be able to understand when I do or don't need joker. If I was using a mix like this, where all the joker was fettled in, I'm just not in control of the peg. You know, I'm trying to use small feeders, big feeders. I need to be in control every single cast. So this is a fantastic way of introducing bait at the start of a session, like we would do on a pole. But unlike a pole, this is the way to do it when you're working with a feeder, because you are in control. You might want to have four, five, six casts with no joker at all because you already feel this joker in the peg. And then you might think to yourself, do you know what? I need a bit of joker to bring some fish back. And you'll have two or three casts with a bit more joker in. So I always have that on my side tray. Now, the third element I have on my side tray brings me back to the lean. So I've got some damp black lean here, which I'm just gonna pop into this other container, just a small amount. And the leams here, almost as like, I'm gonna call this control. So let's say I want to start casting a feeder in. Now you can cast an empty feeder in and almost catch a few fish off your bait, but a lot of the time an empty feeder is not really very good. An empty feeder tends to go in, it can be hard to catch more than two or three fish, there's nothing actually happening in the peg. So I just get a little bit of damp lean and then literally just a sprinkling of ground bait for smell, hardly anything. So it's 90% lean and the rest of it, tiny little bit of ground bait. And I'm gonna use this as what I'm calling my control. So if I think to myself, do you know what? I want to have two or three chucks on this line, but I just don't want to feed anything. I'll probably squeeze this damp lean in. It's nice and cloudy. It's a little bit smelly, but there's no food there. So I'm in control of the peg. So it gives me three options on the side tray. It gives me this baited option for the start. And then it gives me these two options to obviously control the peg as I'm going, which I'm gonna go and show you down on the peg. It really is a straightforward setup. So before we get into the fishing, I think we need to have a little look at the tackle that we're using because it is really important. You do want a balanced setup, particularly because you're bloodworm and joker fishing, you're probably fishing for roach, skimmers, perch, odd bream, something like that. So everything has to be soft and balanced. And in the winter, that's even more important. Now, I would say that every single time I go fishing with a feeder in the winter, this rod always comes out of my bag. It's the 10 foot Superior SL. It's the softest rod that we do in our range. It's got a beautiful action with it. 
If I get a big carp or something, it'll go through to this area. I find myself using it for method feeder fishing in the winter even. You know, it's got the, the, the perfect action for those small fish. And it's what you need. You need a nice, soft, forgiving rod. And nice and short as well. Obviously, the longer you go, the more beefier your rod has to become because it's designed to be longer, to cast further, etc. So by fishing nice and close to yourself, I would say probably anything up to 30 meters, but more comfortably like 20, 25 meters, anything around there, this rod is amazing. So that's my choice of rod. Onto the reel, I've got an Extremity 520. Now, love these reels, but I've got a really light main line. I am gonna say, if I move on to that main line, a lot of people are asking me about tackle in the last few weeks for some reason, and they're talking about reel sizes. Why do you use a 520? Why with such a small rod haven't you got say a 320 or something like that? Well, it's totally personal choice. For me, in my hand, the reel makes no difference. It's not a massive, big, heavy thing. It's balanced because it's in the hand. And I like the power and the drive that I get with a bigger reel, which is why I always choose either 520 extremities or if I'm say method feeder fishing or float fishing, I've got 520 uh, centrist reels. They're my two size reels. I don't own a smaller reel. It's just what I prefer. But you might like that smaller style of reel. So don't be afraid to use it if that's what you prefer. That's the best answer to that question. But on the reel, I've got a very light main line. And that's very important because when you're only casting small light feeders, as we will be today, if you've got a thick main line, like six, eight pound, it's really going to hold those back. I've got four pound, which is 018, sinking feeder mono on my reel today. Okay, a really light line that I can cast with ease, even with this light feeder, and it's not going to let me down. I love fishing with mono. I know that the venue I've come to today, Hallcroft, braid isn't allowed, but I've got to be honest, for all my short style fishing like this, when I'm fishing with barbless hooks, mono is fantastic. Now, I've shown this rig a few times before, but I still get asked about it, so I'm going to show it to you while I'm here. At this point here where my hand is, I've got a three turn water knot. And I've got six pound line here, six pound sinking feeder mono on this last, I'd say meter, meter and a bit. Okay, and the reason for that is I don't want my feeder running on a very thin main line. I want a robust main line. And my rig, which couldn't be any simpler, is literally two of the rubber stops that Preston Innovation do. So I can slide these up and down the line wherever I like. So if I want to put these on top of the hook length, my hook length's only six inches. I could have a six inch hook length. Today I'm fishing 50 centimeters away. So you can see there, it's hooked up on the rod. The feeder sits with this thick main line all the way to there. Don't be put off by it. I'm telling you now, what you've got to remember is when your feeder sinks to the bottom, the hook bait will be close to the feeder. So if you think that having thick line or thinner line for all of this bit will do you any benefit, it won't because your hook bait's landing here right next to your thick main line anyway. So you might as well utilize that fact and get a nice durable line all the way down to your six inch hook length at the bottom. I've been using this for a couple of years now, fantastic rig. So I've got an 010 and an 18 SFL hook on my, uh, at the bottom end. I might even drop down to 08 if it's really hard, but I'm hoping 010, maybe 012 if the fishing's good. So it's a really straightforward setup. And you can see on here, I've got a 15 gram feeder. I've kept the little extra swivel on, so I've got a little bit of a link there. I like a little bit of a link working for myself, bit of movement in the rig. But look, the solid feeder to start with, nice and clean for that bloodworm and joker, and the smallest size. I'm going to be casting it in really regularly. Sometimes I might be casting it empty. I don't want a great big feeder piling loads of bait in the peg. So I'm going to start with a small uh, feeder and take it from there. So let's get on the box. Let's start fishing. I'll show you how we're going to go about it what we're going to put in the feeder and we'll break it down a couple of times in the session so you can just see where the session has led us with what we need to put in the feeder.
So I'm just going to show you how to typically start a session. Now, wherever you go fishing, it's going to be different. So I'm just showing you like a typical approach, if you like, nice and uh, close, 15 meters. I don't want to fish miles out. 15 meters is plenty, often on commercials. Maybe if you're on a bigger natural venue, you might want to fish a bit further. But this mix that we've done up on the top of the bank, that's what I'm going to start with. And I'm just going to introduce it in different style feeders. Now, the, the type of feeder that I'm using is absolutely critical today, okay? So I've got with me one of the open-ended feeders, which has got that hex mesh style design, but it's not meshed. It's almost solid with a couple of small hex holes on them. I don't want the meshed approach when I'm introducing the bait because what I'm gonna do is nip this bait in the feeder so it gets to the bottom and I can cleanly empty it out. Because it's a nice smooth plastic feeder, the bait will empty out nicely into the peg. And I'm actually gonna introduce two lines today. I'm gonna to have one line where I feed an amount of bait like I've shown you that I've mixed up and the other where we just almost start fishing. So I'm gonna take this small feeder, it's, it's, I wouldn't even call it a medium, it's like a small size feeder and I'm just gonna nip out of the mix that I've done for you guys. I'm just gonna nip that in there relatively firmly to make sure it gets to the bottom. You can see there, I'm just gonna tidy it up a little bit. I don't really want anything coming out on the way down, okay? So I'm just gonna put one of those in on a line slightly to my left. So we'll cast that in, try and be as accurate as possible. Make sure it hits the bottom, take your time to let it hit the bottom. It's hit the bottom, I'm just giving it couple of seconds just to make sure the water started to get in there. I'm just going to give it a couple of pulls like that. It's going to stir up the silt a little bit, but more importantly, it's going to empty that bait out into my peg. Now, that's my first line. Now, on my other line, this is where I'm going to be a little bit more aggressive, and I'm going to put the largest size of the same style feeder on. I've not put a... Notice I haven't put like a caged feeder on. For me, the problem with a caged feeder and lots of bloodworm and joker is it all gets caught on the wire. Whereas this smoother style of feeder, it's going to empty more cleanly and you know what it's doing. So I'm going to put probably five or six of these in, depending on how good my casting is. And I'm not going to try and do it absolutely spot on. I'm going to, I'm going to probably put, try and put it over a little bit of a line. So I've got a little bit of an area of bait and each one the same, just nipped in here. And I'm going to put these in and I'll just do one here for you and we can speed up the rest, but in, in the peg, the same as before, let it hit the bottom, be confident that the bait is starting to break down, couple of pulls, and because the feeder is like it is, it should come straight to the top or you'll feel no resistance and it means you're winding in. So I'm gonna put another five of those in now and then I'm gonna show you how I'll start fishing on the negative line. Right, I've, uh, I've just got into the fishing Probably about 45 minutes in, and this is my second fish now, and it's uh, it's proving quite interesting. I'm going to I'm going to show you um, how I've been starting because these fish look like a decent stamp, to be honest. Like those sort of like um, I don't know, 14 ounce skimmers, something like that, that sort of size. Let's just have a little look. There you go. Look, he's a little bit smaller. He is. He's probably about I'd say eight ounce, something like that. But they're the sort of fish that I'm expecting to catch on Bloodworm and Joker on a feeder. Now, what I did to start with is I've started on the more negative line, okay? And I haven't introduced any extra Joker from the start. So I literally just, if I find another one of those small feeders for you. So that little small feeder, all I've been doing is just nipping it in the neat ground bait. And I've done that for the first sort of 40 minutes because I just wanted to take it steady and I've actually nipped it in quite firmly. So I'm having a five minute cast. It's winter, it's cold. I'm waiting for these sort of slightly better stamp fish and I'm casting it out, trying to wait like five minutes. And in that five minutes, I'm expecting probably just towards the end of the five minutes, that bait has probably broken down. And when I've caught a fish after two minutes on one of the casts, I wound in and some of the bait was still in the feeder. So what I'm trying to do is keep everything nice and tight, not go nuts, not go crazy. Don't forget, I've got that line where I've been a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more bait. So I'm just gonna stick with that for the time being. I'm just gonna try and cast around this area. I would say if I don't, that was a, my second fish. So there's obviously fish still there. And I would think probably after an hour or so, I'll probably start thinking about maybe mixing it up, putting a little bit more joker in the mix 
and putting this feeder in a little bit softer and almost topping the peg up if you like. So that's what I'm trying to encourage you to do. Think about your Bloodworm and Joker as a top up rather than that, you know, fishing at every cast. And that's what I've been doing at the moment and it's been working really well. One of the most important things I think in any feeder fishing, but oh, perch there, in any feeder fishing or, but particularly with Bloodworm and Joker is how you read the bites, how you watch your tip and, and see what's happening in your peg. Because Bloodworm and Joker, the Joker itself is the, is the finest sort of particle bait you can get if you like. It's like a, a really so fine, the fish almost become preoccupied with it. I, I can probably give you some examples of like, you know, like micro pellets or hemp. And you've had that, you've had that conversation where, oh, the fish just got preoccupied on it. Well, what happens with joker? That happens a lot. So often because the fish are in your swim, I'm just going to cast this out and, and almost try to show you because the fish are in your swim, what happens is you often get a lot of indications. Okay. You get a lot of like, little taps and tips on the on the tip and that's fish in and around milling around on the bottom okay so if i just try and tighten this up a little bit and then set the tip for you guys so you can see there there's my quiver tip in the in the in the fishing position okay and i'm just going to try and mimic it on the line so a lot of the time you might just get little like these sort of things where or a slower one like that, where fish are just swimming around and they knock into the line or something that pings a little bit like that, right? And those, all those indications, sometimes you might get these sort of things like, and you think, well, that, has that got it in its mouth? And it hasn't, all right? A lot of the time, that is just fish in and around your peg because joker is so fine. You're looking for things like this. You're looking for much more defined, like big nods like that, like, it's not a massive bite, but for me, that sort of thing is what I'm looking for, or a, or a bit of a, like that. You know, they're the sort of bites that I think, yeah, that's a fish. But a lot of the time, if you think about it, it's hard to distinguish, because sometimes you get this, you get those slightly slower, you know, or, or, or a little ping off like that. And that's just fish in and around your peg. Now, don't get me wrong, sometimes you will come back and your bait will be damaged and one has picked it up. I tend to find a lot of the time, I don't even see a bite when that happens. I think you sort of wind in and there was no bites and your bait's done. That's because a fish has picked it up, mouthed it, dropped it without even moving the tip. You have to remember if a fish picks up your bait, enough for it to register on the tip, the chances are the hook is right there. And for that to make a movement, it's got to almost shake its head to try and get the hook out. And that's when you get that slightly more positive pull. And what you don't want to be doing is disturbing the fish in your peg all the time. So just sit there and I just had a little indication there and that wasn't me that time. So you just sort of tend to sit there a little bit more patient, watching the tip all the time. That is your float, if you like. That's your way of telling what's happening in the peg. So with Bloodworm and Joker, it just means that there is more food in and around your peg than there may usually be. And that's why you've got to be on it so much when you're reading the bites. So it's been a good little first session there. Five, six maybe skimmers in the first hour, an hour and 20 minutes, but I'm definitely starting to feel like the peg is going. So I want to show you what I mean, like how I'm sort of trying to control this. So look, in my tub here, I've got this area of the, the mix. There's, there's no joker. If there's a joker there, it's only because one joker has got lost. But in this bottom corner is where I'm sort of making it a bit richer. So what I'm doing is I'm picking up like a blob of joker. Let's pick up a, a decent blob of joker to show you. Like a blob of joker like that. And I'm putting it into the corner of the bowl and I'm just work in that corner with my fingers to distribute that joker in and amongst that ground bait. Because now what I'm going to do is what I've been doing for the last hour and 20 minutes after that initial feed of joker is I've just been nipping this and I'm going to show you what I've been doing, like nipping it in the ground bait like that, squeezing it, giving it a good squeeze into that feeder. So that's nicely in there now. It's not it's not going to stay in forever, but it is going to stay in for the majority of the cast. And I've just been fishing like that. So if there's a joker in there, it's just an accidental one joker. It's, it's nothing. It's, you know, it's no amount of bait. 
and that's been working well but i can definitely get the sense that the fish are eating a little bit of bait and if i'm not careful these fish are going to drift off so for the next two casts what i'm going to do is just scoop it into this richer area but i'm going to barely nip it and i'm just look you can see how much joker it is what a difference there like and i'm just going to give that a little gentle nip so that joker is going to break down so even if a fish picks it up after like a minute I can be sure that that joker will empty out into the peg. So I'm saying within 30 seconds, that will all be just soft in the feeder. So as soon as I wind in, it's gonna leave it there. And I'm gonna have two five minute casts like that. And I'm gonna treat that as a, like a little top up. And that's how you've got to think about bloodworm and joker. It's the same when I talked to you about it on the pole. That is the feed bait. That is the bait you are feeding into the peg. You can't just plow it in every cast because well you can on some days when the fishing's great but if you you need to consider when and where that joker goes in and that's why you can just see how i worked it in my bowl now i'm going to have two casts like this on this feeder just to try and give the swim a little bit of a top up so before we have a little look on the line where we put some bait we've had a lovely session so far but i'm hoping we can catch a few over that bait for you as a sort of big finish if you like. I wanted to touch a little bit on the type of feeder and how you might change how you introduce bloodworm and joker with the feeder. So for example here, this is typically a type of feeder I try to ignore when it comes to bloodworm and joker fishing because for me, I feel like on the cage, a lot of the joker gets caught up and when I drag it back, I'm just a bit worried about spreading my joker out. I don't feel like it empties clean brilliant for ground bait worms casters an amazing feeder but really only if i had a very odd joker in the mix would i consider such an open cage if i wanted the cage effect i would look for something like this which is like a weight down hex mesh style yes again the bait can get caught but these are a lot smoother this is a lot smoother inside and i just find when i'm fishing with bloodworm and joker with these i don't wind the feeder back with joker on the feeder yeah there's an odd one but not like the cage where i would get a lot of joker so you know if i needed to fish a bit further than what i could comfortably fish with my smooth um side loaded feeders then i would look to something like this now the ultimate for me has to be the window feeder because with the window feeder i can get everything that i want if i want to get a little blob of joker and put it like in the window feeder and then scoop my ground bait onto the top like this then i can do that knowing that the joker will empty clean in the peg every single time and i'm in complete control of how much joker goes into that feeder it's probably my favorite type of feeder but the thing is when i'm fishing really close this time of year i don't want a great big 30 gram feeder clumping into the peg so when i'm fishing further than about 20 25 meters i will look at that window feeder because i feel like i can be really universal this mix that i showed you whereby we've fettled all the joker through the ground bait i can still use the window feeder for that i can just nip that in nice and gently in there and I know that that's gonna come out and you can see the ground bait is nice and clean. The beauty of this feeder is the joker doesn't get stuck. It flushes out of the feeder. So that was one of the key things that I really wanted to get across to you guys today. If you're gonna use Bloodworm and Joker, you do have to think about the type of feeder you're gonna use because it does distribute itself differently into your peg. gone on to this line now where uh, I put the bait in at the start and I had a couple of indications straight away which was great to see this is the second cast it's gone round so it's probably been three hours since I fed the bait on that particular line and it just goes to show that holding power that joker can have in your swim you know where it's allowed it's a it's such a good bait I mean I haven't put anything there for three hours and look that skimmer is there waiting for me. So I'm really happy because I probably caught like a dozen fish like that 
on my main line, maybe, maybe a few more, you know, for eight, nine pound. And now if I can have a couple of hours catching on this line, and again, I've got to be careful with the feed. That, that you can see that, and I'll show you actually, that feeder was in the water about two minutes. And look, the ground bait is only sort of half broken down in there. So there's actually still a bit of bait in there. And that's, I've done that on purpose. That's the, the not a lot of joker mix, squeeze nice and tight. I just didn't want to, I wanted to go and have a look and see if there was anything there on the bait before I start feeding again on that bait. But it's been a really interesting session so far. Hopefully I'm going to catch a few more on this line now, but I hope you've enjoyed a little insight into bloodworm and joker fishing on a feeder. Maybe you might not be scared to go and give it a try for yourself because it's a great way of keeping fish coming during the winter. Don't forget, like and subscribe to the Press Innovations page for more fantastic videos with myself and some other anglers that we use. See ya.